What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of All the Mods Expert. Oh, yeah. So last episode, guys, we started into getting some technology going on. Yeah, so we saw that in order to make the kinetic dynamos for our water wheels, we needed to make all the copper cables and all that kind of stuff. And I was looking at our resources and we just don't have enough copper. So I decided to do a little bit of branch mining. I broke into this cave. And yeah, I've been kind of exploring the cave a little bit, but uh, I wanted to show you guys this. This is called Moonstone from Extra Utilities 2. I've never seen this before. I already broke one, not knowing what it was, and I got a Moonstone out of it. So I was kind of searching JEI here for Moonstone ore so I could see where it spawns, and it, the Moonstone ore itself doesn't even show up in JEI, which I thought was kind of weird. But anyway, uh, yeah, so I found it here. This is at Y38. I don't know if it only spawns at Y38, if it can spawn anywhere in the world. But that's what it looks like. You break it, and it just turns into this little round thingy. <laughs> okay, so those round thingies, if we go back here, uh, these are used to make ethereal glass now, apparently. They are used to make ineffable glass. They are used to make dark ineffable glass. And finally, they are used to make the deep dark portal so yeah if you ever wanted to go to the deep dark you need to go find these moonstones at least in this mod pack and then we're gonna need some other things i don't did i look at these before i might have looked at this before i don't remember guys <laughs> so we need like this dust and that comes from these different things we probably need to combine something yeah metal alloy -er. right so titanium gold silver copper so getting titanium yeah, it's going to be a minute before we can even get to whatever this ingot is. I'm not going to try and pronounce it because I'm going to say it wrong. Uh, so, yeah, Deep Dark Portal is not a thing that we're going to be able to get to anytime soon. So I'm just kind of going through this cave right now. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit easier to <laughs> cave and mine resources than to branch mine and keep it all nice so monsters aren't spawning in your branch mine. So, yeah, I figured I'd go through here. Uh, and just collect all the resources out of the walls and just light it up to prevent monsters spawning and all that kind of stuff Looks like I reached the end. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm gonna continue on uh, mining through here My inventory is kind of full, but I'm gonna see if I can just pack it full of this other stuff before I go back Yep, let me continue on with this and we'll be right back guys All right guys, so I got back from my mining expedition. We have a lot of stuff now plenty of Mineral to turn back into iron lots of other different things like all these uninspected minerals that we're gonna need for the rock hounding mod uh, Lots of nickel and all sorts of different things uh, So I just got done taking a lot of the copper that I smelted down. Yeah, we had just over two uh, stack and a half I think uh, yeah, I melted that down turned into ingots and I processed it through the machine uh, Our metal former outside and now we got some copper cables So the next step was to take those copper cables and turn those into the copper coils yeah, it's a little bit expensive in this particular mod pack, but we are able to do it, which is awesome. All right, so there's that, and this, and there is 8 LV wire coil. I thought I lost those for a second. I was like, where did they go? Oh, that scared me. Anyway, uh, so now we can do one iron ingot with this wrapped around it, and there is a copper coil block. Right, so we're trying to make this kinetic dynamo. So that was the hardest part. So we need two redstone, three more iron so that is pretty simple at this point all right so here we go there's this one of those and two of these boom connect dynamo plus our three water wheels that is all the stuff that we need to start generating a little bit of rf per tick which is awesome okay so i'm pretty happy about that so now that we have that we need to figure out what it is that we can power <laughs> with the RF, how we're gonna set things up. We're gonna need power wires to move power around. Uh, I did want to start powering these machines. Now I do notice this says energy. It does not say RF on there. So I need to make sure that we can actually power these with RF. There might be some way that we can convert RF into whatever it is these particular machines use. So I'll have to do a little bit of research on that, but yeah. We'll be able to start powering these things all the time instead of putting in the little energy tablets or whatever those are. Uh, so I'm going to take a moment here, do a little bit more research on these rock hounding machines, make sure that we can power them with the water wheel, and then we'll start setting things up. So give me a moment. We'll be or be. 
Okay guys, so as I suspected, it wasn't gonna be just straight put RF into these machines. There is another step that we gotta do to convert RF to energy. Yeah, so I was looking at the ATM rock counting mod here. And I saw that there was a heating element and there is an induction heating interface. This says allows rock counting machines to accept RF instead of needing energized fuel blend. So to make one of these heating elements, just one, we're gonna want one for every single one of these and I assume they go right here. Uh, yeah, in order to make one of these, we need a heating element wrapped in iron. Well, the iron's not a big deal. We got plenty of that now. Heating element though does require a couple more iron and then five nichrome ingots. Mm-hmm. So a nichrome ingot is made by smelting the nichrome dust, but the way we're gonna be making it is through a metal metal alloyer. Yeah, metal alloyer. So we need six nickel, two chrome, one iron powder. So chromium dust is a thing that we have not been able to make yet. Uh, it says it's made in the chemical extractor. So I assume it's going to be me like how we've done a few of these things <laughs> previously where we have to put in the uninspected mineral, crush it up and then put it through these machines and do all that stuff. So what it kind of seems like that we're going to have to do is make a whole lot of these test tube things, right? Make a whole lot of this sulfuric acid, probably have to make three lab ovens so we can uh, have a lab oven for all the different types of chemicals that we need. Yeah, it seems like it's going to be a little bit involved here. So I, what I need to do is get a battle plan set up, figure out, yeah, this is the machine we need. So we need hydrochloric acid and we also need hydrofluoric acid. We need all three of those in order to process these different things, right? Hmm. So yes. Uh, I need to get the lab oven set up so we can make these different machines, have that stuff automatically be pumped in, or at least so we can take a bucket of each one and dump it in here and have all the stuff ready to go. It's going to be a little bit involved here. So, uh, I'm going to take a moment. Let's see the lab oven. I think this is what we needed. Yeah. I need to make like, I think two more of these things. So we should be able to do it. I don't think anything's crazy about this. Yeah, it's just iron, some redstone. We can even use tin for uh, the hopper. So that's not that big of a deal. Uh, so yeah, I'll go ahead and start making up some of these machines, try and figure out a, a logical order for getting this stuff done. And then we'll be back. All right, guys. So I made a few more of our rock counting machines here. It seems so weird though. The last time we made these things, we kind of struggled to make them only to find out that we couldn't really do anything with them. <laughs> Not a lot of stuff anyway. And now this time when I went to go make more super easy. All right. So we have four lab ovens. Yes, we need four of them. Each one of these lab ovens is going to be producing a different thing. We saw down here that we need sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid, and also hydrofluoric acid. Right. So we saw that we got the hydrofluoric acid by crushing down uh, granite, or I guess putting it through a mineral sizer. Uh, so we have a new mineral sizer back here that's going to be specifically for doing that, which is going to put it into this lab oven and hopefully... The idea is that these three lab ovens will pump their fluids into this mineral analyzer, filling this up. Okay, so we have another lab oven over here, which is going to be making another fuel, another gas, actually. It's going to be called Syngas. So yeah, we actually needed four lab ovens. So we'll be putting Syngas over here. We'll also be putting some hydrofluoric acid over here, which we'll be creating from those other machines. Yeah, and that'll be able to do whatever it is this chemical extractor does. We haven't really got a chance to mess with that too much yet. Uh, metal alloyer, it seems like this is going to be pretty easy. Yeah, the resulting stuff from the chemical extractor, I think, goes over here. Hmm. Uh, we'll figure this out as we go. And this mineral sizer, whoops. Uh, but hey, where, where the thing? What did I do with the thing? It's right here. Do I just shift click it? Okay. Uh, this mineral sizer is the one that we're gonna be putting the uninspected ore in. Yeah, it's gonna crush it up, and then that's gonna head over here to our mineral analyzer, which, you know, gets analyzed or whatever, and I think the stuff from here goes over here, and the stuff from here goes over here. I think that's how this all works. Uh, again, I haven't really had a chance to mess with this stuff too much, so I'm gonna be learning as we go. But I figured it would be a good idea just to kind of get all these machines laid out and figured out before 
you know, we just start doing things manually by hand and having to repurpose machines and lose a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, so I think this is going to be a pretty good setup. Are we going to leave it out here on the grass? I don't know. For right now, we'll probably do that just for simplicity so we can keep, or I guess so we can start progressing a little bit. But we'll probably end up putting this in somewhere else and making it look nicer eventually once we get everything figured out and we progress a little bit and can get better pipes and all that kind of stuff. Great. So the next step is we need to provide these with power. And since we cannot make, we cannot make the power thing for RF, we're going to put our water wheels on hold for a moment and we're going to try and start making some of this chromium stuff. Yeah. I don't think there's any way that we can do that directly. I think we have to put the uninspected ores in and start processing this. So I guess the very first thing we should do is start getting these things hooked up. So we can start making a whole lot of whatever it is that these particular machines make. All right. So that's going to be my next task. I'm going to start working towards that and then we'll be back. Okay guys. So I just got back from the nether and I'm noticing everything's flashing <laughs> in the background there. That's really distracting. Let me stop looking at that. Um, is it, can I look in any direction? Things not flash. Hmm. Anyway, so I just got back from the nether. I mined up a whole bunch of glowstone. Well, it was only about th two stacks, two stacks of glowstone dust. I made some energized fuel blend and I put it into some of these machines here. So now we're full on energy on a few of them. Those three right here, this one back here and this one right here. So we got energy in all those. And I think I also put it into this mineral sizer as well. Okay. So now we got energy going on in these machines. Uh, some of these do require water. Right. So we need to put water in, let's see. Yeah. We need to put water in the one that makes sulfuric acid and that that'll be this one. And we're also going to need to put water in the one that makes sin gas, which is going to be this one over here. So I was looking at different ways to get water. Obviously we can put an infinite source and bucket the water in. I really don't want to have to do that by hand. That's just not fun. So I was looking at other ways to do it. Like I was searching for pumps and all sorts of other things. And it seems like most of the different ways that you can make water have been disabled. Like there's uh, infinite water. That's like a thing that we use a lot in previous mod packs disabled. <laughs> all right. So no infinite water, no way to pump water. The only thing I can think of is that we're going to use um, extra utilities to the mining upgrade thingy this right here so this allows money of cobblestone so we can make a cobblestone generator out of this or water and pumping of water right so in order to do that we're gonna need a golden pickaxe and an upgrade base the upgrade base is made in a resonator with weighted pressure plate so we're gonna need to get ourselves a resonator so the resonator is not so bad. That is made with obsidian redstone these resonating redstone crystals which we've already mined up and some Iron. I think it's about time we get into making some GP. So this is going to be our next task. Yeah. It's like, we want to start on rock counting, but we got to do these other mods first. <laughs> All right. So we should be able to do this. No problem. So there is a resonating redstone crystal. There is two redstone. And then I think it was five iron to make the resonator, right? So let's do this real quick. Uh, no, nope. click on the thing, click on this, then, oh, we're missing obsidian. Uh, we have obsidian in here, don't we? Yes, we do. All right. So now we should be able to make our resonator. There it is. Okay. So now we have a resonator. So the resonator is great, but it can function unless it has GP being made already. So we have a few different ways to make GP. Let's just search for GP. So we can do a water mill. This is probably going to be the way that we make all of our GP later on, but that requires stone burned and that is polished stone in the resonator. So we need GP to make the water mill. Uh, there are solar panels. This is a way I prefer making GP. So you just make, I think three recipes of these, you set them down and then you don't have to do anything. The other method would be using a manual mill where you got to sit there and like hold right click and look at the thing. And I don't want to do that. So we're going to do the solar panel. So we're going to need nine lapis, three resonating. We should have all of this stuff. So there's nine lapis, three of these resonating things, and then some polished stone, which I can't remember how to make. I think it is. Oh, wow. Oh my. Okay. So we're going to need living rock. <laughs> uh, so hello, Batania. 
<laughs> so we need greenhouse block around a pure daisy to make this. Oh my goodness. Camouflaged paneling. We need a carpenter. Right. Does this require polished stone? That requires polished stone too. What about the lunar panels? Polished stone. Is there any way to make GP without going down this road? <laughs> Come on. Any way at all. Um, windmill. Nope. All this requires stone burned, which is going to require us to have the polished stone. All right. So it looks like we are going to be jumping into Batania to jump into extra utilities <laughs> to be able to pump water. Mm hmm. All right. So chiseled living rock, which comes from the living rock brick, which comes from living rock, which comes from putting greenhouse block around a pure daisy greenhouse block is made from regular Minecraft bricks and the camouflage paneling. So we need to get ourselves a carpenter with, I think these are specific color dyes. Yes. It looks like it. We're going to need ash from forestry and we're going to need some kind of a sawdust or wood pulp. So to get ash, we need peat burnt. I think we had to use ash for something else. Cause I think that's what we needed peat before. Maybe I'm wrong. So the wood pulp, we need a precision sawmill for that. Uh, we can do, oh, we can just put into a carpenter, any log into a carpenter. Okay. So let's look at the carpenter. This is good because now we have a way to produce RF with our water wheel. So we'll, might get some use out of that. <laughs> All right. So the carpenter, uh, yeah, the recipe for that, we need bronze ingots plus bronze ingots, right? So we are going to need 14 bronze ingots and two glass. It looks like how much bronze do we have? I think we had some made. Oh, <laughs> okay. We have exactly 14. So let's do one of these dirty casing. Uh, we need two glass. All right. So this plus this equals a carpenter. Yay. We did the thing. All right. So we have a carpenter. Now we need our water wheel set up so we can power this carpenter. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's nighttime. I'll sleep. I'll go ahead and get the water wheel set up. We'll probably try and set it up in the most efficient way possible. That was a way that I discovered back in, um, FTB infinity evolved expert mode. I do believe where you can get 88 RF per tick per, if you set the water in a certain way, I don't know. I don't know if the water wheel is set up to make that much power in this mod pack. It might make three RF. It might make the default. I don't know. Anyway, I'm probably going to reset my client to try and get rid of this flashy business. <laughs> uh, we'll set up the water wheel and then we'll be back. All right, guys. So I framed out our water wheel here. It's kind of a big thing and it doesn't make a whole lot of power, but it is our first little bit of RF and we do need that to power our forestry machines. So here we go. So we have the kinetic dynamo here. You just place the water wheels directly on there and I just built a frame all the way around it. So I made it so there's one space below the water wheel. The way this works is you put water on top, you let it flow over the wheel and then down and then underneath it, the more flowing blocks of water. The water wheel is touching the more power that it makes, right? So the way we're going to do this, let's get up to the top here. We want the water to flow over this side because that'll make it look the nicest in my opinion. So the, here's our center point. We want the water one block before the center point. So one block before that, we need to put something to stop water from flowing this way. We want the water to flow this way, right? Okay. So now that we got that there. We can place a water source here. That'll flow over the water wheel and that should start it turning just a little bit. Not a whole lot though. If it even gets going at all. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's spinning now. All right. So we'll come back up here. We can place a second source block of water. Uh, I'm actually going to do something a little different here. Stop bouncing, please. Uh, I'm going to place some glass right like this and I'll place water here. We'll make an infinite source. That'll help us out a little bit and then I'll stop the water from flowing and stop the water wheel from spinning. Now, like I said, the more flowing blocks of water that's touching the water wheel, the more power that it makes. So if we come down two blocks like this, place some glass right here, that won't interfere with the wheel at all. We can place more water here flowing into the water wheel, pushing it the same direction like so. That might start spinning just a little bit. It's not a whole lot, but that'll add to the overall amount of power this thing's going to make. So now that we got that spinning a little bit, we can remove this glass here. 
So grab that. So now we have all the water flowing around it. We have the water back here flowing into it a little bit. So this is what we're looking like right now. That's pretty good, right? All right, so one final thing of water we can do to get this going the maximum efficiency. Let us... Oh, I'm going to need a regular pick. I don't want to break all of the blocks here. Let me grab a regular diamond pick or our stone pick. Either way. All right, so we will poke out right here. Okay, so I put some glass right here along the floor. So what we want to do is put water source here and have it flowing away from the water wheel. And that'll get it going as fast as we possibly can, optimizing the amount of power that we make from this thing. Break one more block here. All right. And then my water bucket. So place water there. And we will place water here. That'll make an infinite source in the center here. Right. And so we got three more source blocks of water flowing away from the water wheel. So that should be going as fast as this thing possibly can go. And that's what we're looking like now. So we got the water source on top that flows all the way around. I do have some glass blocks here to kind of make it go down here, push it over one block into the water wheel more. It drops down and then it goes along the bottom like this, right? We have the three source blocks right here, one block higher. And then we have the three source blocks here flowing into the water wheel at the top. So in Infinity Evolved Expert, that produced 88 RF per tick. I don't know if that's the same amount of power that it produces here. Like I said, I don't know if they've adjusted how much power these water wheels make, but that's what we got going on. So yes, that is that should be the maximum efficiency for this thing. Can I, why am I going so slow in the water? I don't know. So if we put a carpenter right here, we should get power out of that thing. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Yes, it has power. We don't know how much power it's making. It's not super important right now. Uh, we'll put water into this thing, and then we should be able to do some stuff with this. Okay, so let's go back here. Now, we were trying to make... Oh, we have to do the whole Batania thing, right? So let's go back through all these recipes. I don't have that listed here. Greenhouse block. We should probably have that right there. Okay, so we can click on this for a greenhouse block. Um, so that is a camouflage paneling plus these bricks and the camouflage paneling requires all this stuff. Oh, actually that requires biomass. I didn't even realize that before. Oh boy. Uh, all right, <laughs> let's take a look at this bio mass. Uh, oh my goodness. Okay. So a biomass requires a fermenter with fertilizer, mulch, compost, and some kind of a thing to make a little bit of biomass. So we have to make ourselves a fermenter. So the fermenter is made with more bronze, some more bronze gears and some glass. Okay. So that's not so bad. We're almost there. The hard part's done getting the power supply hooked up. We'll have to figure out a better way to move the power around. We might be able to use the immersive engineering stuff, but that's a little expensive, but it might be the best way for us to do it at the start here. Okay, so fermenter is next on the list. I'll make one of these so we can make some biomass and we'll be back. All right, guys, so I cooked up a lot of bronze. I got about eight blocks made and then I was able to make our fermenter no problem. I made two more LV wire coils, but I kind of wanted to show you guys how the uh, immersive engineering wire stuff is done. It is slightly different in 1.10 than it was in 1.7. It's basically the same, but we do need to have these LV wire relays as well. So I'll make a recipe of those and then the LV wire connectors. We need two more copper. Should be able to make it now. There we go. Okay, so the relays and the wire connectors, you need a little bit of copper and six of the clay blocks that are smelted, the hardened clay. So now that we have all of this stuff, we should be able to head over here and start distributing our power that we're making between the two different machines, which I think is gonna be pretty awesome. Okay, so we'll remove our carpenter from here. Yep, so on the side of here, we're gonna do an LV wire connector. That's the same as it's always been, but now we need to use these wire relays. So I'll go ahead and place, I guess right there should be fine. Do that. Oop. Oh, I forgot this pick is a little slower than my hammer and <laughs> not used to it for breaking cobblestone. 
I'm gonna jump up on this thing. Yeah, right there. We'll place one more block up here, torch. I'm gonna get rid of this block right here. I want this to be at the same level as our LV wire connector. So we'll put the relay here. Yeah, the difference is before with these wire connectors, the LV ones, you could attach multiple wires to it. You can't do that anymore. You have to attach one wire to one connector. You can put that to a relay and then from the relay, you can attach that to multiple different connectors. But yeah, you have to, you can only do one LV wire per wire connector now. So that is the difference. Oh, you know what? I need one more of these LV wire coils. So we can connect it from there to there and then we can put I guess down to a fermenter. I'll get the carpenter going here in a little bit. Is that fine? Yeah, that should be fine right there. So we don't need the relays anymore, but we do need these. So we can go from there to there. That was already linked up. So now this should be getting power. Yeah, that's getting power just fine. We're up to 8,000 uh, RF in here. Uh, so now we can do our recipes to make the biomass, which as we saw before was, what was it? How do we make it? <laughs> Let me click on the right one, I guess. Uh, so fermenter, right? So any type of crop and it looks like some of this forestry fertilizer stuff. Now you can get that two sand plus an appetite gives you eight of those, or you can make it a couple of different ways. I think we're going to do the appetite method. We do have some of that stuff now. Look at these going over here. These zombies, they keep, <laughs> they keep getting attracted to me. And then they'll uh, call their buddies down the caves and I'll have people underneath the ground making all sorts of noise. Now we got these guys coming over here. They're all coming out of the woodworks. Anyway, uh, so let's get this hooked up now. We need to get the fertilizer. We need water. And we also need some kind of a uh, plant material that we're going to turn into biomass. We, have, we should have plenty of stuff in here. I don't know if we can turn saplings into it. It looked like there was a lot of different things that we could turn into biomass. Maybe we'll do potatoes. Those are things we already have growing. We could probably do beetroots. I believe we have those growing. Yeah, potatoes should be fine. Uh, appetite, we have some of this, and then we're going to need a little sand. All right, so we'll do this and this. We'll, I don't really want to make a whole lot of that stuff. I don't know how much we need. A stack should be more than enough, though, I do believe, for what we're trying to do here. Uh, I put the appetite back in the sand back. All right, so we got the the potato. We got the fertilizer. Now we just need to ferment that stuff. So we should just be able to put those in the machine over here. Yeah, should just be able to put those into the whoop, <laughs> into the machine over here and get things rolling. So this, whoop. this plus this, and then I believe that needs water. Oh my goodness, those zombies. All right, so put some water in here. Oh, wow. Look how much power that's using to ferment. Wow. Okay. Well, you know, we're making biomass. We already got half a bucket of the stuff. Um, so I guess it's one to one on the water. One bucket of water will make one bucket of biomass. Well, that stuff in there, man, that, that eats so much power. That's crazy. Okay. So we have biomass. We can put our carpenter back down here. We can also go to our uh, music and sound and get rid of the zombies. <laughs> That'll make me happier. Okay, so the carpenter recipe that we were looking for was to make this camouflage stuff. So yes, we should be able to do eight of those recipes, eight of this stuff, right? A half a bucket. So now we need to get the rest of these. So let me go ahead and get this stuff figured out. And then we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys. So we got everything ready to go here except for the peat. We need peat to be burned into the ash. And in order to make peat, we have to create bog earth. The so bog earth is created with dirt, sand, and water. Pretty simple. You can do this in the crafting grid. You get six of them. You can do it in other ways to get a little bit more. Uh, and then there's also a carpenter recipe, too, that I saw. So that is... Uh, requiring mulch. So if you have mulch, you can get it this way, which I think that's the default way of doing it. We don't have any mulch. So anyway, uh, I did it the the sand, dirt, and water way. <laughs> so you have to place bog earth, from what I understand, up to two blocks away from water. And then over time, this will slowly turn into peat, right? Uh, actually, you know what? I should probably use this thing here. Yeah, that'll turn into peat 
over time. I don't know exactly how long it takes or if we can speed it up by using a watering can or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, but anyway, we'll go ahead and place some of this stuff nearby the water lake. So we'll get rid of this stuff here. So there, there's a couple spots, something like that. And we have two pieces left, which I guess we'll place right here. Now I do believe uh, it kind of turns into something that looks like hydrated soil when it turns into peat. But again, I don't know how long it takes. If it's exactly like five minutes, if it's just a random tick, like uh, crop growth, you know, it could happen in five seconds, could happen in 20 minutes. I honestly don't know. We could try using our watering can on there though and see if we can speed up speed up the process if I can grab the right item out of that chest. Oh my goodness. Okay, so yeah, I do believe like I said that it turns darker. I don't know if it turns into something else besides bog earth. Oh, it says maturity right there, maturity. So if I right click on there, I don't think that has any effect on it. No, we just got to wait. Okay, so 66%. So, I mean, that, well, is it going faster? Actually, you know, I think maybe this is making it go faster. Because these are all 0% over here. That one just turned. Yeah, I think the watering can does work on it. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, So, watering can <laughs> works pretty well. Yeah, we got the mature bog earth. I'm going to try and get all this stuff to be matured. All right, we need to fill up our watering can now. Now there's a way with this watering can, like if you press and hold right click, it'll just keep going. Or if you hold right click, it like does the bouncy thing. I'm not really sure how to get that thing to work every time. So I just sit there and hold right click. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we need to take some of this stuff and turn it into ash. Uh, it looks like we get dirt back when we do that. All right, so there's our peat. A little bit more. We ended up with 12 out of six. So it looks like you get two peat per bog earth. Uh, okay, I was just making sure I didn't need to place down a torch or something over there. So now we need to take this and turn it into ash. And you did that by just smelting it in a furnace. Um, does this have any? This does have stuff. All right, so how many of those did we need? Let's go back one more time. Take a look at our recipe here. So we need a greenhouse block that makes four of these with one of these recipes. So... Uh, we might need two of these recipes. So we need two ash. That should be pretty easy. We'll just go ahead and cook those down real quick. Uh, and then we should be able to turn these things into those green panelings. Now we also needed to make ourselves some brick. I think we had, yeah, we have some clay here. We should be able to turn those into the clay balls. Yeah, I think we need to do all eight of those, don't we? I think so. Let's go ahead and do this and we can use our shovel. There we go. How many do we have? 31. I missed one. Where is it? Found it. Okay. So we got those right here. I'll put 16 here. I'll take some of this and put some out his side so we can do this a little bit faster. All right. So that'll make the bricks. So now we should be able to take this ash and put it over into the carpenter and start making those green panelings. My goodness. There's a lot of stuff that we have to do, isn't there? <laughs> All right. So we have no recipes set here. Let's. Get rid of this bog. All right, so we need this and this. So it's red and then yellow. Red, yellow. Blue on both sides. Uh, Go back, back. So it is the sawdust on the bottom. Oh, we also need planks. I don't have the planks on me. So we can do wood pulp. I believe that works here. And then we can do ash. All right, so now we need to get ourselves two planks and then we should be able to make two of those recipes. All right, so that should be a pretty simple thing to do. Grab one of those, this, that. All right, so now we should be good to go to make this stuff. See if we can slingshot over there a little bit faster. Nope, I got caught on that stupid fence. That's the second time that's happened. I should replace the other fence post that I removed a long time ago. Anyway, uh, so there's that. Now we need water in there, or is it by, uh, before I put water in there, what is it? It is biomass, this stuff right here. All right, so we put the biomass in there. Yep, camouflage panelings, and we got another zombie friend coming to say hi. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, so this doesn't look like it's using nearly as much power as what we were using before, but I guess the carpenter goes slower. Uh, so why are we not, oh, I didn't put all of the yellow in there. There we go. 
Wait a second. Is it any colored dye? Because I have four yellow dye in here. No red dye. And that's just working. I thought it had to be yellow, red, and blue. Can we go back to that recipe real quick? Except any dye yellow, except any dye red. But it looked like it worked with the same colored dye for all of these. Hmm. I don't know. That seems awfully weird. Anyway, we got our camouflage paneling. So we should be able to make our blocks and then start into the Batania stuff that we need next time. That's right, guys. We have run out of time for this episode, unfortunately. We made some pretty good progress. We got some stuff going. We have RF power. We have a water wheel. We made some forestry machines. I'm feeling pretty good about this series. I don't know how much you guys are feeling about it. But anyway, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.